I was teaching, teaching, teaching in a really tough school and I was doing loads of loads of gigs at night time and I was exhausted in it. And the school was so tough, by the first year I was the second longest standing teacher there. Like I could have been vice principal just because I knew the codes, <laughs> you know, to the safes. And I was exhausted and all the, the students were tired, the, the parents were really poor and disgruntled, the teachers were disgruntled, we had a terrible boss. But there was one parent there and she was very glamorous, she always looked amazing. When you looked up close now she had kind of fake lips, she looked like she should have been in front of a fish shop and her hair was very bleached. But she was very nice. And any time there was a charity event, most of the parents could barely afford to give anything. But she would open up her bag and she would pour out. Twenties and fifties would come out. And I couldn't really understand it. And then somebody whispered to me, she's a prostitute. And I thought, I want to do that. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, I couldn't really go that far. So me and a mate, we decided we would sign up for a website for sugar daddies called Seeking Arrangements. <laughs> now, unfortunately, when you're a comedian, you do a lot of stupid stuff because you want to get material for your jokes. You know, even the worst things that happen to you, sometimes you can be quite happy. Like, if somebody breaks up with you, you're like, oh, lose a bloke, gain a joke. <laughs> Bad shag, good gag. <laughs> We've had a lot of those tonight, haven't we? <laughs> So I went along and I was going to meet this man, right? He said he had 30 million pounds. He was, um, I don't know, he did like acid management or um, acid stripping or rape bonds. One of those things that rich people do that nobody understands. Rape bonds is not real, by the way. But, um, and, I met, and I was really nervous before I met him, so I drank a little bottle of vodka, right? And we were getting on amazingly well. And sure didn't I go and have sex with him. And then the next day I was in his amazing mansion. He said the person on the trainer had to, call, uh, to, to arrive. And he was like, did you come, darling? And I said, yes. To my senses, I am leaving here right now. But before I left, he gave me two 500 pound notes. And I thought, oh my God. I am making a living out of my hobby of blacking out drinking and dodgy one night stands. And I kept seeing him. And I went on and he got me an apartment in a beautiful part of London. And I'd come along to kind of events with him. And one night we were in the Houses of Parliament to meet one of the CEOs of his company. Um, he was a former a disgraced Tory minister. I won't say his name, but the nick his nickname in the tabloids was Yo Ho Ho. Um, because he slept with a lot of councillors. And Tim and my then boyfriend, boyfriend, <laughs> I don't know if you can call a man who's 30 years older than your boyfriend, but Howard. Even his name is old, isn't it, Howard? Like, that's not the name of a strapping young man. Like, Howard is the name of someone who was minister for postage stamps between the wars. So we were in the House of Parliament. It was when they were voting on um, going into Syria. And all my mates, a lot of them were out protesting. And I was in here in this conservative bar like an absolute asshole. And Tim Yo, he was, oh, I said his name there. Whoops. <laughs> He was, don't tell anyone, he was regaling with me in tales, he was showing me around, he was going, there's the bar where the Labour Party drink, we call that the Kremlin. <laughs> and then he would say things like, you know, I was once in your parliament, I believe you call it the doll. Well, we had a game of golf between your parliament and mine, and I have to say, we trounced you at the golf but you ruddy well trounced us at the drinking. <laughs> and it was kind of funny the first four times he said it, but then it got boring. And I mean, like, so I had to start revealing to people why I was living this much better life. And when I told my female friends and my male friends that I was living with a much older man, the reactions were so different. Like my female friends were genuinely concerned for me. And my male friends just thought I was an absolute legend. <laughs> and they would all do it themselves. But they took the piss out of me immersively. They would say things like, what sex toys do you use, Aideen? Like a defibrillator? <laughs> or where did you meet him? R.I.P. dot I.E. <laughs> or, you know, I would defend Howard and say he's very fit. You know, he can still touch his toes. With his balls. <laughs> It was very difficult and um, I remember once, you know, I was going down on him and all I could see was his sandals and his socks and the archers was on in the background. And I knew then, no, I would have to leave. But I learned a lot. Two of the things I learned, one was that money can't buy you happiness. 
he wasn't really happy, his daughter wasn't happy, but money can rent you happiness for sure. Like you can distract yourself with money and nice dinners and personal trainers and all that for ages. So it's not 100% true to say that money can't buy you happiness. And the other thing I learned is that um, it takes about six CEOs before you get the right one. So there's a tip for you guys. <laughs> Thanks very much.